I'm going to in and light my candles, okay? And so, McKinnon, if you can, are you familiar with fire and flick a bick and you know how to do all that? Okay. If you can do all that, if you would light the three purple ones and the pink one, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, McKinnon. And if you remember, uh, last week we found out why we have the pink candle. The pink candle was something that represented the candle of joy, okay? And uh, we, re we reminded ourselves last week that, thank you, McKinnon, I appreciate it. And when we come back to church tomorrow, we'll light the white candle, and that's the Christ candle. But we found out that the pink candle was the candle of joy. We found out in the church ages, that at first it was just uh, Lent, and Lent was a very solemn time. And then on the, th on the third Sunday, they would always give somebody a pink rose. And so when the church decided to have Advent, they decided to make the third Sunday the pink candle for, for a candle of joy, okay? And so, but today we, we lit the, the, the third purple candle, and that is actually the angel candle, or also the candle of peace. Angels, we, we find out, played a very prominent role in the Christmas story. I'm just going to show, I'm going to read to you real quick what the angels did before the birth of Jesus. Number one, angels informed Zacharias that he would have a son called John. Zacharias was married to Elizabeth, which was Mary's cousin. Angels also announced to Mary and told her that she would be pregnant and they would call his name Jesus. Also, the angels told Mary that Elizabeth, her cousin, was pregnant and that she should go and help her. Also, the angels told Joseph not to divorce Mary. Because Joseph, uh, can you imagine this? You know, you're engaged to your wife-to-be. She comes up and tells you, I'm pregnant. What are you thinking? And I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit. You try that one for size, hallelujah, okay? It tells us that Joseph was a good man, and he did not want to make a public show of her, so he was going to put her away privately. And in a dream, an angel came to Joseph and said, Joseph, Mary's not lying. What she has inside of her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit, and don't divorce her. So Joseph, the angel told Joseph not to divorce Mary. Also, an angel came and told Joseph and warned him that Herod wanted to kill the baby Jesus. So they left, and they actually went to Egypt for several years. And then the Bible tells us that an angel came and told Joseph now that Herod was dead, and now they could move back to Israel. And so angels played a very prominent role leading up to this first Christmas story and also during the first Christmas story, okay? These messengers that we called angels were very busy. And now let's go over to Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And we find out that angels played a very prominent role that first night. And it reads in verse 8, And there were angels living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those of whom his favor rests. If there was any doubt what happened in that small town of Bethlehem in a stable nearly tw over 2,100 years ago, if there was any confusion about these amazing events, the angels and the heavenly host wanted to clear things up. Whatever they, what, uh, whenever angels appeared to people, they were doing two things. They were either delivering messages or they were worshiping God. See, as heavenly beings who spend their time in the presence of God, I think we can learn some examples from these angels. We need to be people that express encouragement to others, and we need to learn to be people that will worship in God's presence. So this fourth candle, the candle of angels or the candle of peace, are telling us that I find out I have greater peace when I spend time worshiping Jesus. Not just in church, but you know what? When I'm at home, you know, the other last night I was laying in bed and I looked out and I did. I looked out in my windows and I saw all the all the stars and I thought, you know what? Silent night, holy night. 
And I sing to myself a lot of those Christmas carols. You know, last week when I saw little, little Emily Lamb just singing from the top of her lungs about at our Christmas program, you know what I thought the Christmas song? Go tell it on the mountain. Little Emily was telling everybody about Jesus. She really was. And so I think you and I can experience more peace in our hearts when we actually are telling others and encouraging others about who Jesus is. And you know what? The angel's visit not only spoke of joy to the world, but he said, peace on earth towards all, uh, towards goodwill towards all men. See, folks, you and I can light up every heart with the light of God's glory and with the, with the light of God's love. And that brings peace. The angel's message was that darkness, confusion, uncertainty, and fear did not have to rule and dominate the hearts of men. Think about this, saints. Up to this time, there was great uncertainty. Up to, this great, uh, up to this time, there was great confusion. All these things. And when those angels appeared that first glorious night, and they told the shepherds, and they said, joy and peace. They were saying, all of a sudden, all the rules have changed. All of a sudden, you and I can have joy and peace in our hearts. And we're going to find out joy and peace don't come from the outside. Joy and peace come from the inside. Amen? See, God, through His Son, Jesus, was giving us a new option to live by. The option of peace. Over in John chapter 14, verse 27, these are the words of Jesus. He said, these are, this is what Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. You know, if we look around in our world today, there's a lot of things that will try to steal our peace. There's maybe a lot of things we could be afraid of. But you know what? God comes along and says, if you'll have God's kind of peace, you don't have to be afraid of things in life. You know what? We say about Jesus is coming back on a white horse. And you know what? I don't know if I'll be alive when he comes back or maybe I'll already be in heaven. But you know what? We can have peace. Jesus is going to take care of us. You know what? I don't ask you to take notes much, but if you want to write these things down, I think this is really important. The definition for world's peace, world peace is defined as the absence of conflict. World's peace is defined as the absence of conflict. God's peace is defined as the presence of someone. Let me say that again. The world will tell you there's peace because there's an absence of conflict. God says you can have peace because of the presence of of someone. See, we need to realize if we want peace, we have to have the presence of someone in our lives. The miracle, the incarnation, the miracle of Jesus, of, of God taking on the form of man, okay, is that God's grace touches earth, and from the virgin's womb comes God's great promise to mankind. Meryl and I have had the privilege of, of being uh, in Bethlehem. Meryl and I have had the privilege of going uh, to the church in the nativity. And it really is kind of amazing in life when you walk in there. There's this, this great big facility. But it's amazing in life too because uh, up for the first about 14 or 15 centuries, they had a great big door that you could walk through, but people would bring all their animals and everything through it. So you know what they decided to do? They made they they actually blocked in the wall. And so now when you want to get into the church in the nativity, there's about a three or four foot opening high and maybe about three feet wide. And you know what you have to do if you want to go in and see where Jesus is born? You have to bow down and get through the door. And you know what? Bowing down has kept a lot of people from seeing Jesus, physically and spiritually. But I tell you what, I remember when Meryl and I, we went in there, and you walk down in, and, 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 and you walk down a flight of stairs, and it's, I tell you what, folks, there's nothing spectacular about it. And you know what? There was nothing spectacular about it then. Jesus was born in a manger. They laid him in a food trough, okay? It was stinky. It was smelly. It was probably not the cleanest. And so we need to realize, but there was peace that took place there. Why? Because the presence of Jesus. So many times we think if our circumstances will change, we'll have peace. No, only the kind of peace that the world offers. Yet Jesus said in John 14, 27, 
I don't give you the kind of peace that the world gives you. I give you the, my kind of peace, the peace that is dependent upon the presence of someone. The angel said, on earth, peace, goodwill towards all men. See, that word peace actually in the Greek and in actually in the Hebrew says God's favor. Peace correlates with the Hebrew word shalom, okay? Shalom means to have the blessings of God's favor upon your life. You know, after every service here, I pray the ironic blessing over you. And I pray that the peace of God will come upon you. Because see, God says that's what he wants to give you. God's favor. Turn to your neighbor and say, I have God's favor in my life. Turn to your neighbor and say that. You have God's favor upon your life. You might say, how do I know that? Because Jesus came and he said, peace and goodwill towards all men now maybe you and i don't always recognize the favor of god but we have the favor of god upon our lives until that night in bethlehem saints because of sin mankind could not experience god's favor upon their life in a permanent way but as a result of a little baby being born the rules changed hallelujah and now mankind could enjoy a peaceful a blessed a favored relationship with the master and the creator of the universe. See, I get excited about this stuff, hallelujah, okay? You know, somebody once asked, they, I was talking to somebody this week, and they said, you know, you get pretty excited about all these things. I tell them, you know why? I didn't become a Christian until I was 19, and I played really hard for it with the devil for 19 years. I was a good companion of the devils for 19 years and i thought if i could do all the things i did being a companion with the devil when jesus saved me i was going to be that excited if not more for jesus because he's the one that redeemed me he's the one that gave me peace he's the one that gave me joy he's the one that loved me he did all those things that's why i'm excited about jesus because he's given me a peace when the storms of life are blowing god can give you peace and we need to realize that. And it doesn't, because, it doesn't come because of circumstances. It comes because of the presence of so, someone. No wonder the angels were so excited that night. And they should have been. The angels were excited. They had been waiting for eons to come and bring this message to mankind. Sin's, sin's hold over mankind that night was about to be broken. And the peace of God was ready to be restored. Couldn't you imagine if the angels would have come up, said, hi, guys. Hey, for unto you is born a child, you know, in, in the manger, peace, goodwill, joy. No, they were excited for us. Hallelujah. They had seen, remember, folks, they had seen a third of the angels leave heaven. They had seen what sin had done to God's creation. They were excited for us. Hallelujah. They knew God's creation, mankind, was going to be able to come back into fellowship and we were going to have peace with God. I shared with you, you know, the church that I grew up in was a very a very uh, liturgy-oriented church, and I didn't think God had much peace with me because I wasn't the nicest kid. But I needed to realize that God had redeemed me, God had given peace towards me, and now I just had to live it out into my own life. Look what it says in Luke chapter 15. Where we're going to read verses 7 and 10. This is about the angels getting excited. It says, uh, it says I tell you that in the that in the same way that there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who report that repents than 99 righteous people who do not, do not need to repent. In the same way, verse 10, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. I tell you what, folks, if you're no sourpuss, you're going to hate heaven, hallelujah. Because there are parties in heaven, hallelujah. Every time someone says, Jesus take you as my lord my savior there's a party in heaven the angels are rejoicing the bible says and so why were they so excited to come on that first christmas night because they wanted to party hallelujah and i believe every day and every hour someone around the world is making jesus their lord and the angels in heaven are throwing a party they didn't even have to call conrad's catering hallelujah okay See, we look for peace in so many different places, people and things, yet lasting peace, true peace, life-changing peace can only come from one source, that's Jesus. Because we're going to read a little bit later in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It tells us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. 
Shalom is primarily associated with a person's life, an internal blessing. Why does God's peace start on the inside? Because you and I will never experience peace to its fullest with others personally, politically, or internationally until we first experience peace on the inside. People are trying to do all these things. But folks, if you're mad on the inside, you're going to be mad on the outside. If you have peace on the inside, you can have peace on the outside. See, shalom really does talk about an internal peace. You know what? Things can be falling apart. Have you ever seen a parent? You know, sometimes you think, are you oblivious to what your kids are doing? And they just seem to be having a peace on the, you know, you're thinking it's so chaotic around. Probably like the Taylor Christmas party last night, I'll leave it. You know, the hundred and some of them that were there. You know, all the little kids running around. And they could have a peace on the inside, even though maybe it was chaotic on the outside. You know what, folks, how about we read in stories about people like Fox's Book of Martyrs. We read about the people, in the, the Christians in the Roman times when they were martyred and they could go to their death with a peace even though they knew on the outside their life was ready to end. How could they have a peace? Because it was the presence of someone within them. Many times, I like, you can tell how someone has lived by how someone is going to die. And you know what? If you can have peace, you know what? You know it's because you're present with Jesus. Amen? See, why should we, and why were the angels so excited? Because something was about to happen that had not happened since the days of the Garden of Eden. Man was going to be at peace with his God and could once again walk and talk in the cool of the night with their God. You don't think Jesus, our God, the Father, and the Godhead wasn't excited? I think one of the things that God missed the most because of sin was he couldn't walk and talk in the cool of the night with his creation. Read your Bible in the book of Genesis. It tells us that because of sin, no longer Adam and Eve could walk and talk with God on a daily basis. Now, all of a sudden, because of Jesus' gift to us, we could walk and talk People say, you, you walk and talk with God? Aren't you a little, woo? No, no. You don't have to be nuts to walk and talk with God. In fact, I think you're nuts if you don't walk and talk with God. I don't know about you. This world is kind of screwed up. Hallelujah. I, for me, I need to get the right mind. I need to get peace within me. And it comes by walking and talking with the Lord on a daily basis. He wants to give us his peace. This God kind of peace that is made available to each of us through Jesus Christ is more than just simply peace. It's a complete peace. It's a feeling of contentment, of completeness, wholeness, well-being, and harmony. You know, uh, you know, praise God, Meryl and I, our house is getting closer and closer. They've been getting everything done. And, you know, and I'm so glad we did it. But, you know, I, you talk about something that tried your faith and your peace. Okay, hallelujah, okay? You know, Bob Brewer never told me half of what it takes to get a house here from Norfolk. Hallelujah. He only told me the really good things, the easy things, okay? And because he had done it in 1999, okay? Bob, a lot of change and some things have never changed, okay? But there were times, okay, when it was very stressful trying to get all these things going on. And there were times I just had to really, I had to sit back and say, you know what, Jeff, it's all going to work out. I, I need, I can't let these things steal my peace. Because you know what? Those things didn't bring me my peace. They really couldn't give me that peace. Jesus was it. And you know what? And maybe you've had a good 2018. Maybe you had a rotten 2018. I don't know, but things are going to happen in our life because life happens in 2019 that's going to try us. And it's going to try to steal our peace. And the only way it can steal our peace is if you and I will walk away from Jesus. Because remember, God's peace is the presence of someone. And Jesus did tell us he would never leave us nor forsake us. He said in Matthew chapter 28, he said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. You know what? See, saints, we don't have to go anywhere and be anywhere without God's peace in our lives. Look at what it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse Nine. It said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Who are the primary object, uh, objects of peacemakers? 
those who are at war with each other. Have you ever got in between kids when they were fighting? You're called the peacemaker. And a peacemaker usually is between two warring factions. And God says, blessed are the peacemakers. How can you bring peace in a warring situation? Because you have the prince of peace to bring there. Over in Romans, look at what it says in verse 10, verse 15, uh, chapter 10, verse 15. How beautiful are the feet of those that bring the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings and good things. What makes the messenger's feet so beautiful? The Bible says the message of peace. The message of peace to a worn, torn world and comfort to those that need comfort. Saints of God, you are peacemakers. Saints of God, your feet are blessed because you're bringing peace. You might say, well, how is that? You and I have Jesus. And His presence brings us peace. This world needs peace a lot. Maybe where you work, does it ever get chaotic where you work? Well, you know what? like drama I don't like drama at all man and so maybe you don't need it you just need to bring peace you know the Bible says a soft answer turneth away wrath you know what do you know you and I have can do something about bringing peace into a situation you know Meryl and I for I think for Christmas our friends Jeff and Mandy Pennington they gave us a mezuzah a mezuzah is a little Jewish thing that you put on the side of your door and it, and, it's, and it has the Shema in it. And the Shema is Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and all that is within thee. And so we have that up on our garage door. And what a Jewish family do and what Meryl and I have done for many years, when you enter that door, you rub it and you say, Lord, bless those with peace that enter into this home. And as you leave, you rub it. And it's, not, it's nothing magical. It's not superstitious. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's just a reminder, because when you come and visit me, and I know you will, hallelujah, okay? When you come and visit me, the nice thing is we have a 300-foot dry saw, see you coming, hallelujah, okay? But when you do come and visit us, we want you, when you walk into our house, we want you to experience the peace of Jesus. That's what we want you to experience. And when you come in, that's what Meryl and I always do. Lord, let your peace reign in this home. Have you ever walked into a home where there wasn't peace? Come on. Have you ever walked into a home and you think, this isn't good. There's friction here. Well, I tell you what, I want people to walk into our home and say, this is wonderful. I want to stay here, but you can't. I'm like, okay, <laughs> but you can't, okay? We'll get you your own mezuzah and we'll let you put it at your house. Hallelujah, okay? But do you understand, see, the world is missing peace. And you and I are peacemakers. You and I is what the world needs. And I want you to know that. See, as we look upon the candle of peace today, it's a reminder that the light of Jesus will guide us to share God's peace with those around us. Over in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, it says, For he himself is our peace. See, Jesus is our peace, who, uh, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Why? See, folks, I'm not hoping to get peace. See, peace isn't something. Peace is someone. Jesus is our peace. Sometimes people might say, man, you're pretty big on this Jesus guy, aren't you? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Because Jesus is peace, okay? It says in Isaiah chapter 9, it says in verse 6, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. We need to get in the kingdom of the Prince of Peace. And over in Galatians chapter two, verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. See, folks, peace doesn't come by circumstances. Peace comes inside of you. I want to read you a little story I think you'll like. The greatest little boy in, ba in a baseball hat stands in the field with a ball and a bat, says, I'm the greatest player of them all. He puts his bat on his shoulder and tosses up the ball. As the ball goes up and as the ball comes down and swings his bat all the way around, the world's so still you can hear the sound as the baseball falls to the ground. 
Now the little boy doesn't say a word, picks up the ball. He, he is under, undeterred. Says, I'm the greatest that has ever been. And he grits his teeth and he tries it again. And the ball goes up and the ball goes down. And he swings his bat all the way around. And the world's so still you can hear the sound as the baseball falls and hits the ground. He makes no excuses. He shows no fear. He just closes his eyes and listens to the cheers. Now the little boy, he adjusts his hat, picks up his ball and stares at his bat. Says, I'm the greatest and the game is on the line. So he gives his all one last time. As the ball goes up and as the ball goes down, with the moon so bright, he swings his bat with all of his might. As the world is still, as still can be, as the ball falls flat, and that's strike three. Now it's supper time, and his mother calls. Little boy starts home with his bat and his ball says, I'm the greatest, that is a fact, but I didn't know I could pitch like that. <laughs> See, peace is knowing no matter what happens in life, you're an overcomer. He just thought, he just realized he was the greatest pitcher. He wasn't the greatest hitter. Peace realizes you're an overcomer. Because you know what, folks? Sometimes in life we're going to strike out. And you know what? You're going to have to decide, is that going to steal my peace? You just got to say, you know what, Lord? You got another plan in life. You know what, Lord? I have you in my life. Don't you remember what, as we read the story when, when Jesus and the disciples, when they were going across the Sea of Galilee and a storm came up, and all of a sudden the disciples, they were, they were thinking they were going to drive. What was Jesus doing? Sleeping in the boat. <laughs> kind of sounds like some of us sometimes, amen, you know? It was amazing life. We went to Bancroft the other night. I don't even think we were out of town, and Amy McGill was sleeping in the front seat. Hallelujah. Okay? She must have been had peace in her heart. Hallelujah. Okay? Okay? But Jesus, remember, he got up and he told the, the disciples, he said, what are, you, what are you all upset about? You know what I think? See, Jesus told the disciples, we're going to the other side. You know what? They weren't at the other side, but the disciples forgot. Jesus said, we're going to the other side. He didn't say we're going to go in the boat and sink. And then Jesus got up and he told the winds and the rain to be still, and there was peace. Why was there peace? Because the presence of Jesus. See, Jesus has a destiny for each and every one of our lives. We all have a, he has a plan for every one of our lives. And we might be in the middle of that storm right now, but I want you to know, Jesus says, you're going to the other side. You're going to the other side. How can I know you're going to the other side? Because Jesus said you are, and because you're, he's riding in your boat with you. And when the storms are coming, when the wind is beating, when the rain is coming down, I want you to know we can have peace because Jesus is in our boat with us. Amen? As a baby in the manger, Jesus brought peace. And when he comes back, you know what? He's going to be bringing everlasting peace when he comes back to take us home. We have found out this Advent season we have hope and love and joy and now peace. The world or circumstances are not the originators of this wonderful fruit that we have. Therefore, the world and the circumstances can't steal it from us. Christmas reminds us of a time when heaven met earth in a prominent way and invites us to participate in God's kingdom so that all may hear and understand the message of the angels. Peace on earth, goodwill towards all men. You're blessed, saints of God. I know sometimes maybe it doesn't feel that way. You're blessed if you have Jesus. You're blessed if you have Jesus. I want you to know because of you, the angels threw a party some time ago. And maybe you have not made Jesus Lord of your life this morning. We're going to give you an opportunity because you know what? What a greater time to throw a party than right before Jesus' birthday. You know that? And so, you know, we're not talking about going to church. We're not talking about maybe, you know, because your mom and dad did this or your grandpa and grandpa. No, we're talking about have you and I made a, a relationship that we're going to follow Jesus on a daily basis? Are we going to let the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Prince of Peace, come in and rule and reign in our heart? That's really the question this morning. And, you know, as the worship team comes up, and as we get ready to close with a song here, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about, have I made that decision to follow Jesus? Am I allowing the Prince of Peace to come into my life 
and have his way with me. Am I letting circumstances and situations steal from me? I want you to know, as we get ready to get together with family and friends, I want the peace of God that passes all understanding to come upon your life and mine. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Why don't we stand up as we...